Without a doubt, there are many people who are young at heart listening right now. So what do we have here? The globe! Uh, does anyone know where Canada is on the globe? Um, if you don't, come talk to me. Uh, we'll, well, we should yep, figure out no, uh, where the heck Canada is. Uh, there we go, looking right there. Now, of course it's much bigger. We're going to be going to... <gasps> Ancient Israel. I'm going to put that on the screen right now. There you go. Now you're going to be looking at Jerusalem, the city of David. Now, folks, the map that you see on the screen, I'm going to take that off right now. I'm going to go back to the globe. How far? There, southern India to Jerusalem, okay? Southern India to Jerusalem. How far is that distance? If you were to take a flight today from Ben Goring Airport in Jerusalem down to Kochi, state of Kerala, which is uh, definitely south of uh, New Delhi. You're looking about a three, three hour flight. The time, the duration of that flight is gonna be approximately 10 hours, okay? 2021. Now, what about if we were to walk that journey? Well, it's going to be a lot more than 10 hours, especially if that journey was, I'm going to put the map on the screen back up, especially if this journey was 2,000 years ago. Folks, take the map off. Did somebody make this same journey approximately 2,000 years ago? Was this person St. Thomas, one of the disciples? of Jesus Christ. It's easy to doubt. Yeah, it really is easy to doubt that happened because we know for sure Thomas, he definitely didn't have access to Uber. Uh, he, he couldn't take a plane from Ben Goring because obviously Ben Goring didn't even exist. Uh, New Delhi didn't exist, no Indra Gandhi airport. Well, there were no airplanes. Uh, maybe he could have used one of Aladdin's magic carpets. Uh, that's a possibility. A camel, highly likely a camel, a donkey. Uh, but could have the Apostle Thomas begun, initiated the first church, organized church in the history of Christianity in the state of Kerala, southern India, 2,000 years ago. What do you think about that? The power of doubt. Doubt whether you're seven, eight, 10 years old, 20, or 90 years old, doubt can have sometimes a negative comment. I, I doubt that's gonna work. I doubt, no way, Thomas, some guy 2,000 years ago is gonna be trekking over 5,000 kilometers in areas where they don't even speak his language because we know for sure Thomas did not have access to Google Translate on his iPhone, we know that for sure. I mean, and what kind of money did he use? I mean, how did he buy food? Um, there's so many questions. But folks, during the message, I'm gonna present some pictures to you, some evidence. Sometimes local legends are true. Let's explore the power of doubt. 
and travel the globe following Christ's compass. Amen. Don't! We are going to explore the significance of doubt in your faith journey, all of us, no matter where. We may be sitting, what different religious tradition we may identify with the same, the power of doubt. Uh, the phrase, let's look at it right away, right there on the screen, doubting Thomas, yes. Well, doubt, um, I think it's maybe not exactly the right word here, the connotation doubt brings. However, I am going to shine a positive light for the message on the word doubt. Um, let's begin right with our gospel reading right from John, John 20, 19 through 23. So here we have Re uh, resurrection, complete, crucifixion done. Jesus, boom reappears. He's there with all his disciples. You see it on the screen. How would they react? Shock, amazement, over speechless. What are they going to say? Of all the disciples, one is missing. Yes, Thomas. Where is Thomas? So, we're not told. Uh, how are the other disciples, of course? Tremendous jubilation. Thomas hears. Does Thomas believe? No, 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 no. He, he wants some proof, which actually, um, my own faith journey, I can identify with Thomas. I used to have a lot of fun with Dad going um, through the uh, scriptures and asking him um, after church. I mean, I was, I was lucky that way. He, of course, the minister doing the sermon. I lived with him, so I mean, I could always, if I didn't get something Sunday, I could always ask him Monday. One story I had, um, you're familiar with Moses, taking ancient Hebrews, the Red Sea splits open, okay, right, see that on the screen, Red Sea splitting open, the ancient Hebrews crossing through. Um, Mom, Dad, and I, one of our, uh, many years ago, we were going to see some of my aunties in India, and we flew over the Red Sea, went Toronto, London, England, England, it was a fuel stop in Saudi Arabia, maybe Jeddah, and then from there off to New Delhi. So anyways, um, I was looking. I was looking below the Red Sea. Hmm, this was my first time getting an aerial view of the Red Sea. I'm thinking, this is big, okay, and, I, and, I, and I'm, uh, I'm kind of rambunctious, I'm needling Dad. Hey, hey, Dad, do you, do you really think like this, like the whole thing like split apart? I mean, like, like look, at, look at it, it's huge. It's big, folks. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, come on, let's, let's have a serious discussion about this. Dad smiled at me. I mean, he didn't say anything. I mean, I didn't even ask him anything. But um, over the years, I've looked beyond the Red Sea, whether it split open, that is, that's not significant for me. It's the story, it's the meaning, it's the teachings behind it. Uh, so, let's get to another one, Thomas. We arrived there in India. Folks, um, I had the advantage we all did of an airplane. That makes sense. I wouldn't doubt that. Can a person fly from Toronto? Can they get their New Delhi in, man, in about 14 hours? Yes, they can. Yep, they can do that. Now, how the heck, how the heck, 2,000 years ago, uh, this is one thing I love about the story of Thomas. How does he end up in India? Let's begin with the reappearance. So, right there on the screen, you see Jesus now with Thomas. Thomas is not there before, as in the previous picture. There he is. And Thomas, who is with his hands, he's checking to see, okay, Jesus, like, were you really crucified? Let me, let me check your hands. Okay, okay, yep, yep, looks, looks good to me. Oh, okay, yep, sides, well, looks, wow, legit. Nothing is wrong with that, folks, if you have questions. Um, Let's look at right, the words of Jesus. Blessed are those who do not see, yet believe. Okay? Um, folks, that can mean several things. Uh, in my youth, 
and uh, in, my, in, my, in my youthful state right now and in, in my youthful state in the future when I will be, as I mentioned on the council meeting yesterday, actually I'm going to be following Bud's trajectory into 90 years young. Um, I'm still going to be uh, utilizing doubt. Yeah, I am. I, I really am. I'm still going to be used because doubt's important. And when we look at this story, Jesus does not come back to reprimand Thomas because he wouldn't believe. No, 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 no. This is the power and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. The story of Thomas is one of love and grace. It's not one of reprimand. Thomas has made it clear. He's had his request. He wants to see. He wants to feel. Was Jesus, okay, is this really the crucified Jesus, our follower who died a horrible death on the cross. No, 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 I'm not going to believe until I see. I want to see the evidence. He does. Jesus does not reprimand him. No, he's not condemned. It's not Thomas. Now, maybe Jesus also knew something else about Thomas. And this, well, I'm going to leave it for you. Um, I'm going to give you some, show you some pictures on the screen, and you can judge this for yourself. Okay, 40 days, Jesus is still with us before he ascends to the Father. He has his reappears to Mary Magdalene. Paul writes a group of 500, the disciples. Now, I'm, what I'm going to pair with John chapter 20, 19 through 23 from the gospel, is another gospel passage, and that's Matthew, okay? Matthew 25, the great commissioning, all right? What does Christ Jesus do for his disciples here? Go forth to all the nations, see, all the nations, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Done. That's it. The Great Commissioning. Uh, nowhere in the Great Commission, nowhere in Matthew, does Jesus give uh, places to exclude. Or, no, don't go to this country, don't go to this group. Of, that, no, that does not happen. Just go forth to all the nations. Well, um, again, let's look at the map. Um, ancient Israel is a very small place. Um, none of these disciples... None of them have the economic resources of, say, Pontius Pilate. They're not friends with King Herod. Uh, they're certainly not buddy buddies with Emperor Tiberius or any of the um, officials in the Roman court. So where, I mean, how are they supposed to go forth to all the nations? Because even 2,000 years ago, the known world it's a big place. Remember, um, no one has Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, they can't hop on the plane like we did. Uh, there's no Uber. Um, what language did they use when they were encountering different people? God, what, what food did they eat? I mean, poor Thomas. I, I mean, did Jesus know that Thomas would be okay with spicy samosas? I have no idea. I mean, I know I am, but what about Thomas 2,000 years ago? Here is something in the gospel message, which I think is very exciting. And if you take a course, which some of you have grandchildren who will be entering university, first year, University of Toronto, World Religions, the story of Christianity, it begins, not in Israel, Palestine, no, it begins in India. Oh, I'm gonna go there right now. Southern India, the Thomas Christians, the year. Is it true? You're free to doubt. Free to doubt. 54 CE, the first organized church, okay? The second temple is actually still in existence in Jerusalem. It's destroyed 70 CE by the Roman legion. So there's overlap here of 16 years between the church, okay? Look at the map there in southern India and the Roman and, and the second temple, which is going to be destroyed by the Roman legions. Is this story true? Well, 
What, what stories would you like to believe are true? There's different ways of looking at truth. Some schools are going to be very black and white. Okay. From my own experience in life, folks, there's a tremendous amount of gray. And there's a different ways of looking at the truth, especially when we're dealing with documents written in Paleo-Hebrew, which is not the same Hebrew as spoken today in Israel. Ancient Greek, which is not as the same Greek which is spoken today in Greece. Old English, uh, King James, which is not the same English which is spoken today. Um, there are different forms of truth. But let's look. Let's, let's look at this story. Jesus, short time, he makes his appearances. The risen Christ before he ascends. And look at the influence. How a profound, profound influence he had on his disciples and specifically Thomas. We know his words. I'm going to say them one more time. Blessed are those who do not see yet believe. You may have members of your own family who do not believe because they want to see proof. They're not going to be condemned. Thomas is not condemned. Matter of fact, if we look at the story of Thomas, he makes an amazing journey over 5,000 kilometers, likely walking. He may have used a donkey, a uh, camel, he may have joined a, a trade caravan, I have, I have no idea. But he ends up in southern India and begins and starts exactly what in the Gospel of Matthew, the Great Commissioning, he starts to build the church. Now, I'm going to give you some interesting pieces of evidence which may lead you to conclude that this legend is actually true, or you can believe, no, no, Andrew, there's no way Thomas made it down there at that, no, not 2,000 years ago. Right here, right on the screen, what do you see here? This is in the city of Mumbai, okay? It is about a one-hour flight north of Kochi in southern India. Um, the Portuguese name is Bombay, okay? Bom in Portuguese is good. Good day, bom dia, okay? Good day. Um, Portuguese and English, good day, bom dia, Portuguese. So Bombay, the good bay. So the Portuguese arrived here in this city around 1600. The uh, well-meaning priests who have been identified Roman Catholic were going to evangelize. We've already talked about it, the Great Commissioning. Now, they had quite a surprise waiting for them. They're finding locals which are already familiar with Jesus. Well, how did this happen? They're, no one told them. Uh, well, maybe Thomas arrived there. And if Thomas didn't arrive there, maybe one of his protégés, maybe he had a disciple, or maybe his, the disciple of his disciple maybe arrived there. This early group of Christians had no idea who the Pope was, okay? Well, they, they would, because they're in southern India, they really don't have a lot of links with ancient Rome, uh, or Peter, or the Pope, uh, or the first, considered the first Pope in the Roman Catholic tradition. And now, in addition to the synagogue, this is all within one block, folks, okay? Right beside the synagogue, I'm gonna put this, another picture. See the building? That's a mosque, okay? They're right opposite, okay? They're like 30 seconds away from each other. It'd be like uh, Bob Cajun here, we have Trinity, and say Trent Sides right across the street. Now across the street from the mosque, I'm gonna put up another uh, um, building. That's a Zoroastrian fire temple. You know who the Zoroastrians are? The wise men, okay? So again, it's on the same block. You have three, three distinct religious traditions. Okay, now you go across the street from the fire temple. Boom, there's another picture. What do we have here? A Hindu temple. Four now distinct religious traditions. Folks, these four buildings are much closer to each other than Trinity, Trentside, Our Lady of Peace, Roman Catholic Parish, and also the Anglican Church. Um, the churches here in Bob Cajun, the fours are actually, the distance between them is much greater than the pictures 
that you're looking at the screen right now. Now there's another one, a fifth. I'm gonna put that on the screen. And yes, folks, this is a church. So you've got five. Hindu, you've got Zoroastrian, you've got uh, Muslim, and then you've got uh, Christian and Jewish, okay? Five distinct religious traditions all within five minute walk of each other. So this is the environment, whether it's Thomas or it's the disciple of the disciple, whatever it is, of Thomas is walking into. So the idea of religious pluralism, well, it's already exist, it's there. Um, monotheism within the Hindu tradition is vague, okay? It's different than the way Christianity, Judaism, Islam, it's much more specific, clear in Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Hinduism, it's very vague. Now that vagueness, of course, it allows for plurality, difference of opinion, different forms of thought, different ideas of what God may be. One of the academic theologians in university I came across was Paul Tillich. Uh, he taught at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Uh, one of his and, um, Dynamics of Faith, uh, the books that he wrote, is quote from Paul Tillich, religious observance in the church, when it suppresses, when it suppresses doubt, it does not allow for admission of alternatives. Okay? So, if doubt is really something which is frowned upon, or it's something which is, you may be scolded, maybe when you were growing up, maybe you didn't have that opportunity. I was fortunate I did. I could question the religious texts without fear of being reprimanded, uh, without fear of being scolded, uh, without the fear of questioning, you know, uh, hey dad, how this doesn't make sense to me. I mean, how, does, how can this work? I had that opportunity. Not all of you listening did. And what's also, it, this is, can be scary, if you've heard the same message for 40, 50, 60 years, and then all of a sudden, someday, you start hearing something radically different, whether it's reading from the Gospel of Judas Iscariot, or I will be quoting from the Gospel of Thomas real soon, um, how can this be? This is the power of doubt. It's not the big scary monster. It's not the Leviathan. I, as Paul Tillich will argue, doubt, doubt confirms the seriousness of a person's faith. Doubt is not something that is used to mock somebody. No, not at all. It's used as a tool to engage, okay? Engage the biblical text. God gave you a mind to learn. It's your choice as well. And Jesus, and no one here, definitely not me, will ever critique you from wherever you are in your faith journey. That is gonna be up to you. But I wanna uphold doubt, the power of doubt, from doubting Thomas, and examine those words, blessed, are those who believe and who have not seen. That if you want to put your hands, okay? If you want to put your hands where Christ was crucified, tell Jesus that. Thomas did. If you look within Christian history, Thomas is not condemned here. Of course, the Gospel of Thomas it was not canonized. Only, that's only Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are some liberal scholars which definitely uh, do wish that the Gospel of Thomas was indeed canonized. There is no story narrative within the Gospel of Thomas. It is just a collection of sayings. However, the first recognized Christian church in the history, in the history of Christianity is attributed to Thomas not Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It's attributed to Thomas. And it's attributed in a very different land, 
Uh, it's not Israel-Palestine. If you go to southern India, it's a very different place. They definitely don't speak Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew, but if you go there, I'm gonna put this up on the screen now. This is a synagogue. You look at the tiles. All these tiles are actually are Chinese design. So, at 2,000 years ago, there's already trade links by sea established from southern India through the South China Sea, which is, appears quite a bit in the news stories today. Hopefully there's not going to be no big war over there. Uh, but there's already trade links going on. People are already in contact with each other. And then I want to show you something else. This is from the city of Kochi in southern India, Kerala, where the legend says the first church was established. You see that on your screen, it says Jewtown. Okay, the language, the script that you see is Malayalam. The next slide, that's a cemetery. You see the, the lights, the menorah, it's a Jewish cemetery. Let's remove the slide. Now where the heck in southern India does a Jewish cemetery come from? which you can do, radio, carbon dating, and some stones, they're over a thousand years old. I mean, we've heard the stories, you've heard them since your youth. The burning bush, Noah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, none of them are in India. But here you have this Jewish cemetery. Somebody, someone of Jewish origin or a group of people of Jewish origin traveled either by foot, by camel, maybe by boat, and they started to evangelize, grow their faith. The church is there. Um, it's a very small Jewish community which is still active in southern India. You can go to, you can attend Shabbat. So, Let's go back full circle now, right to Thomas. There he is, putting his hands. Was Jesus really crucified? I mean, what's go it's okay to doubt. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. I also want to ask you, do not be afraid to doubt your doubt. Sometimes local legends are true. Yes, that Thomas, 2,000 years ago, may have actually oh, made it to southern India. That yes, a person, Christ Jesus, was crucified, died a horrible death, and yes, oh, he rose. Don't be afraid to doubt your doubt. Oh, that yes, the church will reopen and we shall grow! Yeah, don't doubt that. I don't doubt that because you know what? Church is really cool and we're fun. And the Great Commission, when we walk, when I go walk down King Street, I, I, I see the halibut. Oh, I, I see. I was talking about it Easter Sunday service. The, the new pub just opened up. Oh, there's all kinds of businesses. There, there's even a cannabis shop there. I know what minister would go inside there. God only knows. But you know what? I, I know our camera guru is smiling right now because she really knows what I'm talking about. Folks, don't be afraid of doubt and don't be afraid of asking questions. As I can my concluding words, yes, Christ can go through locked doors, go through walls, but he nurtures us with his life-giving breath and that we may grow in faith together and we shall do that and grow our community of faith. Christ has died, he has risen, and he is with us once more. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore I'll